this is my insane plan to make $1 million a year in the next three years. In the past decade, I've read over a thousand business books to make this plan work. I've broken this video down into four parts. First, I'll go over the three most important insights from those books and then I'll walk you through my entire plan. And then later in this video, I'll also share how at the age of 11, I make $10,000 in about a half an hour. And if an 11 year old can do this, anyone can do anything really. Now making this macro master plan years in advance was very hard, very overwhelming for my little micro brain. As a matter of fact, it's not the first time that I've tried this. The last time I did, I bought several yearly calendars and never got further than just planning the first day. And so in no way, shape or form do I want to suggest that I'm above anyone by reading books, by making money. We are all human beings on this journey together, making way more mistakes than anything else. And so this step-by-step -step plan should be a guide or inspiration of some sorts and in no way an elitist masturbation of the self. Let's go. I like my plans the way I like my toilet visits. Crazy, bold, and big. Famous architect Daniel Burnham once said, make no little plans, they have no magic to stir man's blood and probably will themselves not be realized. Make big fucking plans. Now I may or may not have added the word fucking to this quote, but you get the point. There is a power in thinking big that goes beyond the goal itself. It's about stirring your own blood. It's about making your heart race. Now on top of those internal benefits, there are also a lot of external benefits that come with thinking big. When you are dreaming big, you allow yourself to envision a future beyond your current circumstances and resources. And this attracts way bigger people to collaborate with, way bigger business opportunities. You attract customers that are innovative and that are willing to take the first step instead of dancing like sheep, waiting for other people to make the purchase first. You attract more resources, bigger investors and all sorts of benefits. And so you'll see that this plan is partially designed to think expansively, to think bigger than I'm thinking at this moment. Now the biggest benefit by far that comes with thinking big is that you benefit from that blue ocean strategy, from that first mover advantage. Now the first mover advantage is something that happens when you are the first to offer a particular product or service in the marketplace. And some of the most important benefits that come with that are lower marketing and advertisement costs because there are no competitors competing with you. Higher profit margins because your prices are not limited to the prices that are set by competitors. And you also have an easier time to build relationships with your customers and to build a community out because those potential customers don't have a business yet that they are connected with because you're the first. Now you might be thinking that everybody is already aware of this. Everybody is reaching for the stars so that they end up at the moon somewhere if they fail. And sure, everybody is aware of this. I was aware of this for the last 10 years, but being aware of it and putting it into action is a completely different animal. I talk to artists who are chasing their dreams all of the time and I ask them, what is your dream? And they tell me what their dream is. They say, Dries, I just want to make a living from my art now. That is not a dream, that is a fucking nightmare. If I would have asked those same people, the same artists, when they were 16 years old, what their dreams were, they would have said, I want to be the biggest artist in the world. That's a dream. And so we all lost this ability to dream big somewhere down the line. In the next chapter, we'll talk about the biggest business mistake that I'm making at this moment currently in my business and the lesson that we can learn from that. Now, don't fall asleep here. This is probably the most crucial part of how this whole plan is gonna play out and a failure to understand the nuances in my current business will ultimately result in a failure to understand the business plan altogether. This is a photo of me 10 years ago when I decided to become an artist. And the reason I became an artist is because I was afraid of doing a regular job. I was afraid of Boss Bonobo telling me what to do with my life eight hours a day. I didn't want to exchange my time for money because I thought that I was destined for something greater than being a professional banana peeler. 
The main problem, however, with my art career at this moment is that I'm kind of still doing the same thing. I'm kind of still exchanging my time for money. Here's what I do. I make original paintings that take a lot of time and then I sell those original paintings, meaning that the more paintings I'm selling, the more money I'm making, the more time I have to put in making those paintings. And because I only have 24 hours a day, my earning potential is limited to a very scarce resource, namely time. And so I'm just doing the same thing that I was trying to escape from, namely exchanging my time for money. JP Morgan said, the first step in getting somewhere is to decide you are not going to stay where you are. We are currently in a position where we don't have leverage and we have to go towards a position where we have leverage because that's one of the most consistent recommendations I see in all the business books I'm reading. Robert Kiyosaki said, leverage is the reason why some people become rich and others do not become rich. People without leverage work for those with leverage. The first stage of being an entrepreneur is doing more things, putting more stuff on your plate, becoming more productive because the more productive you are, the more work you put in, the more money you make. And so everything goes good until you realize that time is the ceiling there. And so in the second stage of business, in the second stage of entrepreneurship, we want to go towards a place where we put less stuff on our plate, where we start hiring an editor, where we start hiring a studio assistant, where we start leveraging our time so that we then actually have time time to benefit from the things we were talking about in the first chapter, to benefit, to see those business opportunities and then analyze them and then work towards them, to put time and effort in scaling the business instead of working inside of it all of the time. Now, beside outsourcing things in order to gain leverage, like hiring an editor or hiring a studio assistant, there are also business models that are simply way more powerful than the ones that I've been using so far. And so let's talk about some of these business models that will help us get towards a million dollars a year of income. Let's compare the old fashioned way of making money from your art with the new, hot, exponential way of making money from your art. Instead of making paintings like a Renaissance peasant, let's say that we would make an online course on how to make paintings. Now in this scenario, we would be putting months in making this online course, which is obviously way more time than making one painting. But after we made the course, we can just sit back, relax and let the cash roll in without lifting a brush. And the best part of this whole thing is that selling 100 courses will take you the same amount of production costs as selling 10 courses, unlike with painting where you need 16 years per painting. This is what it means to use leverage and more importantly, this is what it means to use scalability in your business. This is the bulk discount option of the digital age. And some business models by design inherently in them have that scalability factor. And this is another thing that we see in all the business books coming back and back and back scalability. This is by the way why all these software companies are diving into the Fortune 500 list in the last two decades because their business models are extremely scalable. The production cost of selling software is about as low as my dating profile back in high school. If you are making let's say a video game where a cat is chasing a mouse, you don't have to pay the cat a commission every time you make a sale. This is the type of business model that we want. The business model where selling more product and making more money Money does not result in increased time efforts or increased production costs. Another great way to achieve this is by doing the thing that you are watching right now, YouTube for example. Because on YouTube making a video costs you a particular amount of time and resources no matter how many people watch it. The more people that watch it however, the more money you make for the same amount of effort. And so this is again a very scalable way to do business. Now I'm not saying that going online in the form of YouTube or course is the only way for success but if you're an artist it's not not the only way for success if you know what I'm saying offline doesn't nurture a bank account you know now you might be wondering what the actual plan is and can we perhaps go over this plan step by step the answer is of course yes we're going to do that in the next chapter 
most people in life spend more time planning a one week vacation than they spend on planning the most important aspects of their entire lives. Namely, for example, their career. And I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be spending more time planning a vacation than spending time on planning my career. Andy Warhol once said, they always say time changes things, but you actually have to change them yourself. And I completely agree with Andy Warhol here, except for one thing. I don't want to change my sweatpants. That's just way too comfy. But on a serious note, let's go over my step-by-step -step plan to making a million dollars a year. By the way, the system that I'm using here is called Notion. It's free, it's ridiculously easy to use. And so I highly recommend watching YouTube videos. There's a lot of stuff about Notion out there. Go ahead, it's, it's gonna be worth it. So as you can see, this over here is the entire plan or at least the first year part of this plan. And so we have basically an advanced to-do list with priority checkups and things like that so that you can kind of know what's most important and what you should do first. Now let's click on one of these things. So let's say we click on find editor. And so what I do is I quickly write down why this is so important. And so in this section, I wanted to think expansively as an artist, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, we are constantly, especially in the beginning section, focused on doing things ourselves all of the time. And so by allowing us to think about outsourcing things, um, yeah, we can literally save time and, and, and get things done faster and the whole thing you get it. That's what this section is about. And so we write down all the steps that are necessary as I thought of them while making this plan. And the first step here, step one, is as simple as finding a file on my computer. Now, the reason we want to make it as simple as possible, that first step is because the easier the first step is, the more likely we will be doing it. And the more likely we will be doing it, the more likely we will actually achieve our goals. So let's click on one of the other things here. Let's click on goals. Now, before we check this one out, I want to point out that I usually don't share my goals with people because people will project their own insecurities on you with things like, do you really think this is realistic? Or why are you so ambitious? Chill the fuck down. And this is not motivating, you know, it's absolutely not motivating. So. I usually don't do this on YouTube, however, it's easier because you can just neglect all the negative comments. You don't actually have to respond to them. And so that's why I'm testing it out here. Now for this goal, I didn't really put down the steps here. Just a quick, we can achieve this goal with blah, 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 blah. And just point out some of the things that should be done when tackling this goal. Let's quickly check out another one, Kajabi outsource landing page. So again, here we have all the steps written down, ask chat GPT. So we kind of work with chat GPT as well. Now let me tell you a cool little story for this one. When I was 11 years old, I made around 10K in about half an hour. And the way I did this was as follows. My mom gave me money to do whatever I wanted, basically. And I heard friends of her talking about investing in the stock market. And I was 11 and I heard them talk about how easy it was to make money just by giving money and then basically getting money in return more than you invested. And I thought, wow, that's, that's, that, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Instead of buying PlayStation games, I could just do this. And then with the excess money, buy PlayStation games. And so that's what I did. I basically followed the advice of friends of my mom and did some research myself to make sure and then invested the money. And this was before the banking crisis and I invested basically everything or approximately everything in Fortis. It's a bank in Belgium. It doesn't really exist anymore now. And in a matter of a year, what I invested was what? $500, $1,000, something like that. That became 10K. Now, one of the reasons this plan is so crucially important is because of the law of diminishing intent. This law states that the longer we postpone on something, the less likely we become to actually do it. And the reason for this is because we lose the emotional energy we had at the beginning of the project, energy that we need in order to succeed with the project. And on top of that, good opportunities also usually come with an expiration date and so at the end we usually just miss out on the project the opportunity altogether by postponing it's very similar to what leonard bernstein the conductor of west side story said to achieve great things two things are needed a plan and not quite enough time and this is so powerful because before you know it 
you blink and you're 49. What happened? What happened to all the dreams you had in your 20s? Gone. And I don't want to be that person. Now, the most important part of this whole thing, how do you start with a plan to make a million dollars a year? Well, you start with the beginning, going from zero to 10K a month. I'll link a video in the description and in the end screen about exactly that. That said, get the hell out of here.